Here we're going to discuss what's called the vegetation tool. The name itself is kind of misleading as it doesn't allow you to only place plants. It allows you to place things like rocks and rubble as well. You're going to want to find a clear spot where you're going to want to place uh, some trees. And then go to the roll-up bar. And then click on environment. And then vegetation. Now you're going to want to click at the very top left where it says add vegetation object. And it'll open up a menu. All of the trees and plants are located under the natural folder to the left and then under trees. And then you can pick various trees from here. We're going to use jungle tree thin B. Now you'll see it appear down underneath objects. When you select it, the dot next to it will turn red and you'll see a bunch of options appear below, beneath it. A lot of these options depend on the object you have loaded, such as bending, which will allow it to bend in the wind. You also have some other objects such as align to terrain and use terrain color, which you can play around with, but most of the time you want to leave it turned off. Go ahead and select the object, and like I said, make sure the dot next to it is red, and then select paint objects at the top. And then as you drag your cursor along the terrain, you'll notice that it paints the vegetation directly on. Now, you can go ahead and increase the brush radius and cover large amounts of terrain at a time, but as you can tell, you get some kind of weird results when you do that. Now you can hit Control-Z at any given point whenever you mess up on your keyboard, and it will essentially undo the last thing that you did. Now, on the options, whenever you turn the density up, that is kind of misleading as by putting the number up, you actually get less floor. Because whenever you increase the number, it actually increases the distance between each object that's placed on the terrain. I usually find that a density of two works pretty well in a jungle type setting. Now we're going to want to add another object under the same category where it says default. To do that, you can go ahead and right click in the blank part of objects and then select add object. It'll bring up that same menu as before. We're going to add that other jungle thin tree, the jungle thin tree G. And you'll notice that both of them are placed under the default. And you can select each one individually or both of them together to paint them both at the same time on top of the terrain. Now you'll notice, even though you've got both of them being painted at once, and there's two different species, it looks rather unnatural and bland as everything's the same size. And I'll show you a way to fix that really quick. But first, notice that whenever you have both items selected, you cannot set any options. The only time you can set options inside of the vegetation tool for the object is when you only have one object selected at a time. And you'll notice here, the elevation min and elevation max and slope min and slope max, those work the same way as painting the terrain did as I showed you in the last video. You'll also notice some things like cast shadow. If you check it, you'll notice here the trees actually cast a shadow according to the sun. I would be very careful with that as that can really slow down the level of the machine that you're working on. You'll also see here where it says use sprites. Now if you zoom out very far, you have to zoom out quite a bit. You'll notice that these trees turn into two, 2D objects. That's what's called a sprite. You can uncheck that and it won't do that, but it's really good for computer performance when you're trying to view vegetation from really far away. Now if you scroll all the way down, you can paint by terrain layer. For instance, if you check where it says grass, it'll place these trees everywhere that there's grass. I wouldn't really recommend that as you're going to have vegetation and flora popping up in weird spots that you didn't anticipate most of the time. Now we want to add another category, but first let's go ahead and rename this from default. Right click it and select rename category. We're going to call this small trees. Now right click in the objects and then select add category. And we're going to put in bushes. And then we're going to add an object to the bushes. So select the category, then right click it, and then select add object. We're going to look under natural, and then bushes, ground, oh let's you do jungle fern. That looks better. Now the first thing we're going to want to do here is adjust the size variation. Now what this does is it will randomize the size of the plant or the rock or whatever you're placing down so whenever you place multiple, it gives it more of a natural feeling. I find that two works pretty well when you're working with a size of one. Now as you notice, whenever I click on the terrain, paint 
the bushes on, you'll see how they're different sizes. That mimics the bush through every stage of its life, all the way to adulthood, and gives it more of a natural look on the terrain. Now we're going to skip ahead a little bit, and I'm going to show you how to manipulate single objects that have been placed by the vegetation tool. Say you are painting a bunch of trees, and w just one of them got in the way, but you don't want to get rid of all the trees by hitting Control Z. Make sure that you don't have paint objects selected, and then just click on the object in the game world. Then if you click on the cross arrows at the top, that will give you the helpers to actually move the object along any given axis that you select. You can also select the arrow that is in the form of a circle to rotate the object. And you can rotate them around the axis that you select with the helpers. And that works for any object that was placed by the vegetation tool. As you can see, I can move trees around as well. Now that we're getting into adding objects into our level, I want to show you where these objects are stored within the game directory. You're going to want to go to the game directory and then open up the game folder. And you'll notice these pack files. Open up the objects.pack file. I recommend, as well as Crytek recommends, using a program called 7-Zip, which you can download for free. But once you use that program to open it up, you'll see a natural folder. And it essentially uses the same hierarchy as you saw while browsing within the engine itself. You'll notice all the different files that are listed in here. Now in the next section, I will show you how to get your custom assets into the engine, but I want to make you aware of where these are stored so you can start working with them and getting familiar with them right off the bat. Now in the next video, I'm going to show you how to set up your lighting and the skies and the atmosphere for your level.